Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel where we learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play Santorini, a beautiful game that's a lot more challenging than it first appears. What's great in this game is how unique it is. Visually, it's stunning. And as you learn how to play, you realize it's a great tactical game. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. It helps a lot. In Santorini, two, three or four players compete to build the highest towers on Santorini Island using their workers and leveraging God's powers to outsmart the other players. You win the game if either of your builders reaches the third level of one of the towers or if the other player's builders can't move anymore. To set up Santorini, you start by placing the cliff pedestal like this. In some editions, you will have an ocean that goes under, but in my edition, I don't have that. Then place the island board on top of the cliff pedestal. Match the tabs to help you assemble it. Place the three types of building blocks. The ground, the level one, the level two, and the blue domes for easy access. For your first few two player games, there's no need to use the God's Power cards. So keep them in the box for now. Players each pick a color. Now to start a two or three player game, starting with the youngest player and then each player places the two workers onto any unoccupied spaces on the board. After a player is done, proceed clockwise until all players have placed their two workers. Now we're ready to play. Santorini is very simple to play as each turn only consists of two steps. You move and you build. I'll start showing you how to move. The first player moves one of its workers into any of the unoccupied neighboring spaces. You may move your builder pawn on the same level, uh, step up one level, or step down any number of levels. But a worker cannot move up more than one level. And also your worker cannot move into a space containing a worker or a dome. Then that worker can construct a block or a dome on any unoccupied adjacent space you've just moved to. You must choose the correct shape of block. A complete tower has three blocks like that. And if you build on top of the third level, you must place a dome instead of a block. Three blocks and a dome are considered a complete tower and you can't place any more workers there ever again. Uh, once you've built, that's the end of your turn and it's the next player's turn to move and build. After you've played a few two-player games, it's time to start playing with the gods' powers. These cards represent 30 thematic gods that give you a special ability that you can use throughout the game. You set up the gods' powers at the beginning of the game after you've set up the island, but before you select the first player. Note that while all gods can be used in a two-player game, check this icon here to see if they can be used in a three- or four-player game. One player selects a number of god powers equal to the number of players. The player who picked the god's powers will pick last. The player on his left will pick first and on and on until all the gods have been picked. Have a look at the rules for a detailed description on what each god does. Now, once the, the gods have been distributed, the player who picked them will pick the starting player, including herself. Also, for four player games, play in two teams of two players and teammates must sit across from each other. While players share control of the two workers, each player can only use their own god power. During setup, the first player in the team will place the workers and the second one will take the first turn. Once setup is done, it will proceed like a basic game, just taking into account the power of the gods. If any player wins, then the team wins, and if any player loses, then the team loses. Note that in three and four player games, you have to play with the power of the gods. The game ends immediately when a worker reaches the third level of a building. Also, a player loses immediately when they can't move any of their workers. If you lose in a three-player game, you're going to remove the workers from the board and also put aside the god power from the game. Now, my only tip to win at Santorini is that strategies are hugely dependent on the gods that you play. So for more information on this topic, I suggest you have a look at the guide in Board Game Arena. It's brilliant. The link is in the video description. So that's how you play Santorini. I think it's better at two players, but whichever way you do it, it's simple enough for children to learn while also having a lot of depth and content for advanced players. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.